we've got to talk about this right now because the earnings call is on August 7th and Disney in the lead up to the earnings call, there's always something leaked or there's some announcement that's meant to move that needle up, up, up. If it's not before the earnings call, it might be at the earnings call so that the annual stockholders meeting, they have plenty to chew on, plenty to make the shareholders happy as they go into that earnings call. There are several stories here that we need to cover on that instance. Uh, One that we kind of called on this channel, well, we called several of them, but uh, first of all, streaming news almost always moves the needle for stock price. And uh, here we go. Price of ESPN Fox WBD streaming bundle Venue Sports is revealed. It might be Venue, but uh, they might uh, get into trouble there with uh, brand differentiation with Scientology. It's it's Venue Vish upon some stars. <laughs> well, they might be wishing on, sports on a star. And- Does everybody already know what the price of this streamer is going to be? Don't answer if you know. Okay. Lou knows, Vash knows. Any chance that you don't know, Lorena? I don't know, but it's <laughs> probably pretty obscene. Yeah, well, let's just put it up here on screen. Venue Sports, the streaming joint venture of Disney, ESPN, (laughs) Fox Core, and Warner Brothers Discovery, will cost $42.99 a month when it launches in the fall. Uh, The price is at the top end of the streaming market. And uh, but it is consistent with venues proposition to bring linear feeds of 14 sports centric networks to consumers with a full pay TV subscription. Most Wall Street analysts and monthly streaming pundits projected the price would likely be in the 40 to 50 dollar monthly range. Um, I'm, I'm also going to add here for anybody who doesn't understand what's going on here. Alex Sherman from CNBC right here. We have a price for Venue Sports, the streaming service JV co-owned by Fox Disney and Warner Brothers, $42.99 a month. You can lock it in for 12 months if you buy up until launch. A pretty strong (laughs) signal that the price will be going up sooner rather than later. And also a signal that they're really, 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 really hoping they can get a lot of people to buy a year's worth because otherwise... As with most other things nowadays, people will watch it for the month or two or three of the sport they like and walk away and come yeah. back next year. Right, right. Because a 12-month lock-in, that is that is really what the problem is with a streamer like this one. Because this is not you have all the sports. This is you have 50 to 60% of the sports in this instance. That are playing uh, at the moment you are watching. Right, right, right. Um, in so- the season you are watching them. And, and this is this is at the point where uh, Rick, Rick Shaw made the comment. Uh, that's a low end streaming cable cost. You're absolutely correct. At this point, YouTube TV is seventy three dollars a month or something like that, uh, and you get everything, pretty much everything. Uh, you don't have a question about whether or not your game is playing on a streamer like YouTube TV. And, you know, in the gaps, you don't have these weird little blackout things where they say, we'll be back in a a little while. Maybe YouTube TV has a little bit of that. This is also something that might come under antitrust scrutiny here. Uh, Princess Fiona brings that one up here. Is this legal? Seems an antitrust thing. Yes, they are currently being investigated by the Department of Justice over this one. And also, uh, I believe that I'm trying to remember from all of, all of the ridiculous names for streamers. I think it's Fubo that is currently suing them. It's not Hulu or Voodoo or Fulu or Go Fox. do that Fubo that venue so well. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> By the way, then you and I were not much younger. We had this thing called ESPN that had all this stuff. And people thought they were getting it kind of free in their bundle until it came out that it was going A to Disney and B, it was the biggest piece of the bundle that they were paying, but still, uh, eight nine dollars a month for all of that versus forty two ninety nine times twelve. So you're going to write a check or a commitment for how much? Yeah, I, that's more than I pay for my cell phone at this point. Yeah, um, I'm also going to point out another move that they made to try to move the needle on stock price is this uh, Disney Plus, Hulu, and Max uh, quote unquote mega bundle here. And I'm 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 emphasizing this because this is going to take a turn in a place that's a little bit more tragic here. Disney's doing other things to try to move the stock price. Uh, this story out of Variety: Disney lays off 140 employees in television. Yeah, this is the one I was referring to earlier. Yeah. Individually making as much as they wanted to cut out of the whole. Channel. Right. 
this is also related to streaming as well as uh, we'll tie it back here with the movements right. between Charter and Spectrum. Uh, this by Rebecca Rubin out of Variety. Disney was hit with layoffs on Wednesday as approximately 140 employees or 2% of its workforce were let go in the television division. No teams are being eliminated. Mm, I'm, I'm not so sure about that. But not National Geographic locally owned television stations, Freeform, as well as the network's marketing and publicity teams will be primarily affected by these cuts. And I, I see a correlation between the Charter Spectrum news and, and these lists of channels here. Nat Geo lost several channels and Freeform also was eliminated from the list when Charter Spectrum said, we're not paying for all of this. We want you to give our customers Disney Plus for free. Uh, they cut off eight channels in the Disney lineup and some of those were National Geographic. One of those was Freeform. And then there was some other stuff that nobody really wants to buy that was on there. So this is the downstream consequences of those networks going dark here. I also think that there's probably a little prep work here being done for Disney as Comcast is probably going to ask for a similar deal and whoever it is for the rest of the United States asks for something similar here. Well, um, they'll, they'll demand at least as good a deal. They'll actually ask for an even better deal because time has passed. Just like we see these various uh, union contracts in the movie business sequence themselves and they get whatever the last guy got and then they ask for a little more so we'll see yeah totally agree national geographic here is uh, of course the odd man out with all of these uh, television networks see national geographic the magazine is a completely different entity from national geographic the channel because it, 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 they just don't talk to each other. And right now, National Geographic was already, the magazine was already affected by layoffs because they were essentially saying, we're going to use freelancers, we're going to use interns, we're going to use other methods to get these stories published. In that case, that was a heavy hit to advertisers working for the Walt Disney Company or people who coordinated ad sales within the company. Here we are talking about the cable channel, National Geographic, sorry, channels, will have the largest reduction in staff with 60 employees or about 13% of the team being let go. Disney acquired the brand best known for all things nature and history as part of its $71 billion acquisition of 21st Century Fox in 2019. I'll also point out that National Geographic is the only reason that Disney Plus has anything to release on Disney Plus uh, for so many of the weeks that they should be releasing things there. Uh, it'll be maybe one Disney Junior show, maybe a second episode of something that is released on Disney Channel, and most of it will be National Geographic here. So, and this am is I wrong? Nat, Nat, Geo, Nat Geo is now doing shows about the building of Disney parks and, and uh, uh, Imagineering, right? No, so, they're mostly doing, you know, nature stuff. And my favorite one, the show with Gordon Ramsay, where he oh, goes yeah. out to different goes out to different parts of the world and researches, you know, ingredients and has a cook off and stuff like that, but uh, nothing uh, Disney. Well, He's, they had the Epcot special, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they that's did. right. The, they did? Uh, yes, they, yeah. they celebrated the transformation of Epcot using National Geographic. Uh, they're specifically talking about all of the things that are busted at Epcot. Uh, but they're pretending like they're not busted. So, yeah. And uh, the highlight is this amazing empty room where you can sit and get a little air conditioning in. Isn't that yeah. marvelous? So that you can yeah. relieve yourself from the heats that are similar to the Serengeti Plain where the wild animals run. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, all they need is Attenborough narrating it to make it even sillier. Oh, man, I would is. love that. I would love to see Attenborough uh, in narrating all of the people going by, the North American male as he uh, passes by Spaceship Earth. But yeah. it does make you wonder why Disney didn't merge it with the true life adventure stuff from the Disney show. Well, that that is, and I'm glad you brought this up, Lou, because Disney Nature was a brand that was thriving, uh, well, uh, doing well for the company. It was something that they did, to, and the documentaries were great, and the and the footage was spectacular. I mean, they One put, of my you favorite. Know, Charlie, things. the Lonesome Cougar, and. Uh... All those kind of shows into that format too, right? And uh, and, and Charlie the Lonesome Cougar is from that era of Disney films where uh, I've always wanted to do a trivia contest where we debate whether or not it's an actual title because uh, that one reads a little differently today than it would have uh, back in the day. <laughs> now uh, that being said, all Charlie of these spelled C H A R L I, no doubt. 
Yeah, I see. I see. Uh, now, now I do want to point out that all of these moves are made to move the stock price, and this is what brings up. I think they've said eight thousand so far, and in, in this one forty will be added onto that. I don't think it's the last round of layoffs here or there, despite the fact that everything is going well in the movie business right now, even though they only have like what four films coming out this year. I do want to point out the stock price is still moving back down from where it was. No financial advice ever here on the company, except that commenting on this company and why it does certain things is is to say they do this to move the stock price. They do. So the volume is very low. People are currently holding on to this stock. So I was speaking to Bear Place 28 yesterday, and he has some contacts within the company right now. Fortunately, one of his contacts was spared, but the the mood around the offices are it's 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 dire. It's it's not not in a great spot. That is for sure. He's talking to another contact who had left the company actually I believe last year as part of the first round of layoffs that happened. And apparently from their standpoint, they were saying that it does appear that there, there might be an enhanced emphasis placed on downsizing maybe Disney's TV networks and stations and so forth, but maybe placing an enhanced emphasis on Fox because well, Fox right now is producing better quality content, or at least the, the Fox side of the business that they acquired uh, with that 2019 purchase is producing better content right now than, than Disney is. And yep. I, I think there's an acknowledgement within the company uh, to that. I would have to agree. I dump my Disney Plus because there's nothing on there I really want to watch. But Hulu, I've had for over a decade. Right. And I watch so much more stuff on Hulu. There's always something to um, to watch on that. And also as a Disney stockholder, I just have my stock just to, just to hold. That's it. Until Disney starts to put out a steady stream of hits... I don't see the stock price really going up anywhere. Again, not offering advice, just my just my observation. The stock market is very emotional. That's another thing people have to uh, sure. people have to remember. And stockholders like stability. They reward stability with the stock price usually going up. And stable in Disney really is, isn't shouldn't be put in the same sentence right now. Right, right. In 2019, I did a, a deep dive into this company before I even knew that that park place was going to be a thing that I would be involved in. And I got to say, the company ran like clockwork. Their equity was stable. Their income was stable. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me of that moment in uh, in Dark Knight where he says their, their income has grown by this exact percentage year over year. It makes me think it's almost fixed. But at the time, they were, of course, one of the most profitable uh, companies on the planet, making things that the entire market responded to. Uh, they were a culture mover and shaker. And now uh, it, it takes the name not being attached to move the needle now. I would love for this company to be relevant in the right way again. And I, I think they're going to have to get to it by by making content that everyone enjoys and, and this divisive garbage that they put into all of their stuff. Having a show that is Star Wars. By the way, my, my friends that told me that they were enjoying Star Wars, they turned around by the end of it on the end of The Acolyte. Uh, they finally realized what uh, what I was not trying to warn them about here. Disney is a company that needs to get its head on straight and admit that they've made some mistakes and move on. And that that doesn't need to be Bob Chapek. It needs to be that they replace some studio heads here. Come on. Come on. Get with the times, Disney. I think there's some indications Marvel might be moving that direction. But everybody else, come on. We're all waiting to find out who's going to be the next head of Lucasfilm. And it doesn't need to be Dave Filoni. The image has already well, been done, though. I mean, that's the thing. They've spent tens of billions of dollars on content to really lean into streaming, right? They cannibalized all their other businesses, and now they're having to downsize those businesses, and as as we've seen. Go ahead. Go, go back to that story that talked about the top things on Hulu uh, for a second, if you can, Jonas, because they mentioned four shows. They mentioned The Bear. And oh, mentioned okay. Yes. That, that paragraph somewhere there. Here, Shogun. Wait, yes. Shogun. <laughs> Shogun the is Anatomy. Bad. <laughs> My point is, when you're talking about moving things from the from the Disney Plus side to the movie side to get them out of the budget so they don't look so bad, they're paying bupkis for Grey's Anatomy and Shogun. The, the people that produce it are very happy to get the license fees, but that's nothing compared to spending millions and hundreds of millions to produce an acolyte. Uh, so two out of four are old shows. Yes. 
and with the bear, they hobbled the third season of that show in order bear, to get yeah. a uh, fleeting streaming win by saying it was the number one streaming original. They took it off of FX, dumped it on Hulu in one day in order to jazz the numbers, and and they lost out on profits so that they could get a headline, which right now, this is a company that will spend $75 million to get Taylor Swift on Disney+, Plus, but it's not in order to get $75 million worth of viewership on the platform. It's so that they can move the stock price up so that they can raise the market capitalization of the company by increasing the share price. There is only one headline this company needs, and they seem to be physically incapable of creating it. You know what that headline is? Mm. New attraction opens at Disney parks and runs flawlessly day one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That was a highlight from our live stream on That Park Place, where the full stream can be accessed by members to the That Park Place YouTube channel. But what about you? What do you think about this very intriguing and fascinating story? Please let us know in the comments below. Like this video if you did like this video. Share us out as it helps us out tremendously against the YouTube algorithm. And thank you so much for watching. T3, B.O. Please comment, like, and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to That Park Place Podcasts Online, your source for exclusive content and highlights from WDW Pro, The Pro Show, and That Park Place for all the news that should be fun.